Hi everyone and welcome to Brian's Horror Corner and welcome to day 10 of my 31 Horror Movies in October series. Today we're going to take a look at a little bit different horror film than we have so far with this series and that's more of a sci-fi body horror movie and that is David Cronenberg's The Fly from 1986. So I know there's a 1958 version too, I have not seen that one, but this is sort of the one most people talk about or reference when they're talking about the original Fly, even though it's not technically the original, but uh, 1986, David Cronenberg's The Flies. So let's just get into it. I watched it for the first time, and so I have a review here. The Fly is a 1986 American science fiction psychological body horror film directed and co-written by David Cronenberg, produced by Books. Brooks Films and distributed by 20th Century Fox, um, loosely based on the George uh, Langland Land's 1957 short story of the same name and the 1958 film of the same name. The Fly tells of an eccentric scientist who, after one of his experiments goes wrong, slowly turns into a fly hybrid creature. The score was composed by Howard Shore and the makeup effects were created by Chris Wales, along with makeup artist Stephen Du. Dupuis, du Dupaz. So, a brilliant but eccentric scientist Seth Brundle meets scientist journalist Veronica Ronnie Qualf at a Meet the Press event held at Bartok Science Industries, a company funding his work. He takes her back to his laboratory um, of his warehouse home and asks her to exclusively document his invention two pods that can teleport objects between them, while the telepods can transport inanimate objects perfectly. They mutilate the tissue. Well, let me start over. Well, the well, the telepods can transport inanimate objects perfectly. They they mutilate live tissue, as demonstrated when a baboon is ripped apart after being teleported. As they experiment with the invention, Seth and Ronnie begin to form a relationship using two stakes, one a control and one one a control and one a teleported. Seth discovers that the machine is creating a synthetic version of the biological material rather than the object itself. To solve the problem, he reprograms the system to understand the makeup of living tissue, and he successfully teleports a second baboon. Ronnie departs before they can celebrate, and Seth worries she is rekindling her relationship with her editor, her editor Stathis Borns. She actually left to confront Stathis about a, a veiled threat spurred by his jealousy of Seth to publish the telepod story without her consent. Seth teleports himself alone, unaware that a housefly has entered the transmitter pod with him. He emerges from the receiving pod, seeming, seemingly normal. So, does he end up normal? Well, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'm, you can probably guess, considering what I've already said. <laughs> uh, as far as the cast goes, of course, we have Jeff Goldblum as Seth Brundle, Gina Davis as Veronica Ronnie Quaff, Quaffy, Quaif, John Getz as Stathis Borens, Joe or Joy Boschel as Tawny, Leslie Carlson as Dr. Brett Shervers, Shevers, George Chevalli as Marky, and David Cronenberg himself as a, a gynecologist. So, so yeah, the, that's The Fly from 1986, the David Cronenberg, one star in Gina Davis and um, Jeff Goldblum. My thoughts of this movie are that it's it's really good. It's a different kind of horror movie. But what they do with, with the story, what David Cronenberg does, is exceptional. And I'm glad to have this as part of my collection. So we'll just get into the pros and cons, starting with the pros. And you got to start with Jeff Goldblum. There's a reason he was nominated and won an Oscar, actually, for his performance as Seth Brundle slash The Fly. Um, his performance is fantastic to where he brings a real humanity to the character, even after turning into a fly, which is no easy task. It's just wonderfully acted. Uh, character wonderfully acted part um definitely jeff goldblum's best performance from what i've seen of all of his movies um also then you got to talk about david cronenberg's directing it's phenomenal uh, he gets absolutely everything he can out of this idea and the story it really execute it really execute it really executes it with combining horror effects camera work and character development a combination you don't often get in horror movies he does it pretty flawlessly here, in my opinion. Overall, the characters are really well developed in this movie, and have an, and and all three of the main characters actually have amazing character arcs throughout the movie. To where the horror movie is really a great tragedy story, just as much, if not more so, than it is a horror movie. 
Um, you know, you start with Jeff Goldblum's character, Seth Brundle. Obviously, he has a character arc because he starts out as this eccentric scientist and, you know, through the relationship he has with, with Ronnie and the changing into the fly. Obviously, there's a huge arc there. He becomes a different, he becomes less human and more more of a monster, you might say, um, but still having that little bit of humanity. That's what I was talking about with the Jeff Goldblum performance. Gina Davis's character changes because at first she's just this, I want to get the story and that's all I care about kind of thing. And then I, she, she becomes a very sympathetic um, character that has this great tragedy, losing the guy that she loves to this this horror, basically. And then, of course, even John Getz, uh, Sathis Borns, you know, he starts out the movie as very um, selfish and kind of a prick, basically. And But he, he actually becomes a very good supporting character to, to Ronnie towards the end of the movie with what she's going through and everything as Seth turns into this fly character. So they, you don't often get three different good arcs in a horror movie like that, but um, this movie does it. Um, once again, David Cronenberg, just amazing. Then, of course, you got to talk about the practical effects, which are amazing, from the body parts falling off of Jeff Goldblum as he's transforming to the, the melting that uh, happens to John Getz's character of Sathis. And basically the fly, like, spits or vomits some kind of goo on him, and it, you see the melting of his hand and foot. Just just great stuff. All practical effects, no no cheap sci-fi, or, or sci-fi, no cheap um, CGI is what I'm trying to say here. Um, just, just top-notch special effects. They really are. The look of the fly is exceptionally good. Really creepy, believable. Um, again, practical effects used. It's not today. If they tried to make this movie, it'd be a CGI fly that we would see once the, once all the body fell off from uh, from Seth Brundle. Um, but at this time, it was all practical, and it looks amazing. It really does. Um, believable and also sad because of the person the character that we came to know that basically gone now fallen off into this fly monster um yeah just just great stuff um the third act doesn't disappoint with the confrontation between the fly ronnie and sathis and the ultimate conclusion for all the characters very strong very scary sad and compelling and again it just just a beautifully written movie beautifully directed wonderful the makeup used on Jeff Goldblum before he becomes the fly, but when he starts changing, is also some of the best I've seen in a horror movie. Top notch. I enjoyed the sci-fi element to the movie more than I thought I would. Honestly, it wasn't it wasn't overly complex or um, con, um it wasn't too convoluted or anything like you tend to get in some sci-fi horror movies or sci-fi movies in general. Um, also, the lesson that's given with the movie with the transporters and how science can be an amazing thing, achieving a breakthrough, but it doesn't come without its price. And obviously, it has its pitfalls and ultimate sacrifices in this movie and human tragedy. Just great, great. And the gore, you got to mention, the, the gore is exceptional in this movie. Well, for all you gore, gore hounds out there, you don't get a lot of kills in this movie, but the body horror, the body gore that you get is really sad. It'll really be satisfying to you. I actually enjoyed it even though gore is my number one criteria for a horror movie. So those are all the pros. It's a really, really good movie. Um, a couple of cons, and these are nitpicking, but some of the effects, the ones that are more related to the trans, the transportation, the transporting, so like the blue light that's used and stuff, that, those kind of things don't hold up quite as well from an effect standpoint, the actual transmitting of things with the lights going off. That's a little outdated, and that's not really a scary horror movie. Again, this is a different kind of horror movie. It isn't a slasher. It isn't supernatural. It's it's basically the scientist that causes his own horror, and everybody around him. Well, at least the woman that he's involved with around him. So it's it's. But I wouldn't say it's a really scary movie. There's one scene that kind of makes you jump. It's not a cheap jump scare, but towards the end of the film, when the fly. The fly basically tries to set things in motion to his own way. Um, it's as much as I'm going to give away. But as far as scary goes, it's more, I guess it's horrifying. It's the body horror and the, the body gore, but not really scary. Um, more sad than scary, actually. Um, and the movie ends kind of abruptly, I thought, without any real direction of where the remaining characters go. I thought there could have been a bit more there. I mean, I know sometimes a, a cutoff ending like that after... A, a final resolution is is more effective, but I don't know. I thought in this case they could have maybe showed what she did with the baby if she kept it. Uh, 
you know, maybe we could have got a nice a nice scare at the end with the baby there at the end with some kind of hair growing out of its but you know, something to sort of leave the audience with a little bit of a moment. But that's you know, in the mid eighties they didn't do that as much as they do now. So again, these are nitpicky cons. There really aren't many cons to this movie other than the fact that it's not particularly scary and it's a different kind of horror. More for the gore hounds and the character development. But this is an exceptional movie. I'm glad I have it as part of my collection. It's also a really good Halloween October watch. I mean, a lot of people don't think of The Fly as like a Halloween movie. And it's obviously not set on Halloween. But it's it's kind of in the vein of a monster movie that you think, an old universal monster movie, which kind of makes you think of Halloween and horror a little bit. So I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10 once again. Just just really good. Almost a perfect uh, perfect movie for what it is. 9 out of 10 on my rating. Go ahead and comment down below, guys, what you think of David Cronenberg's The Fly from 1986. The characters, the gore. Give me your pros and cons. Like this video. Hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my overall horror content, including the rest of my 31 horror movie series of October here. And what I have coming up in November, which should be pretty exciting. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Stay scared. Bye.